student manager credentials. We've made a lot of changes to credentials, Chuck. So we thought we'd take some time to talk about them. Exactly. And again, kind of an update. You'll know uh, some of you are on 8. Uh, this is a new version out. And we want to tell you all about some new features and try to reemphasize how we think credentials might help you. So uh, this shouldn't take the full hour. So we'll let you get back to uh, uh, what you're doing or enjoying the weather or trying to stay in, out of the, in the shade away from the sun. Um, the kind of things, again, if you haven't been to the other credentials, or if you have seen credentials, credentials were, were actually added to Student Manager in version 7.2a, which has been almost two years ago. But in 8.0, Matthew has done some really cool things, and we'll, we'll kind of warn you about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the old tell me why. I'll skip through that and then go into the basics, adding, editing, filtering, reporting, and questions. So again, we're hoping that what you'll get out of this is an appreciation for some of the different ways you might use the new credentials feature in, in your student manager application. So uh, where might you get tripped up? And again, penguins, uh, maybe the Arctic penguins will make us feel cooler, Lori. So <laughs> one of the hope. things, there we go, one of the new options in 8.0 is that you can rename the credential tab as it sets on the name screen. So <clears throat> if instead of credentials, you want to use the term test scores, or you want to use the term other courses, or you, want to, you can call it Ray, you can call it Jay, the point is you get to label it so that your users might be uh, better follow what you're trying to offer them. Users in terms of staff. Now, of course, this is from the, the staff side. Number two, you can move the tabs around. Uh, just like you can move columns around, you can move columns around to make them easier to see as you're looking. And of course, um, I want to talk about, uh, well, I, I skipped ahead out of sequence there, but uh, a couple of new things in terms of the way the screen looks. All right, let's kind of back up now or, or get to the big picture and say, why credentials? Why would this be something that you might use at your application. Um, here are just a few of the different ways that we think we could use it. Now, Lori, I think actually, if you would, um, did you get that p uh, poll done that we were going to try to do? And I have just about forgotten. I did. All right. We have a poll that we're going to ask you in case you have been looking at credentials. So, Lori? Are you currently tracking student information on the credential screen? So we ask and you may select as many as apply here, what you're using it for, or if you're not using it all, please tell us that as well. So. Yeah, we'd like to know what you're doing with, um, what you're doing with uh, credentials. So if, you, if you've got any use of those, I, I, again, I'm, I'm trying to get my student view here, audience view. Where's my audience view? Audience view. Here we go. All right, here we go. I'm looking at it now. Not been using. All right. So how are we close? We've got 88 percent voted. So we're going to count down from five, four, three, two, one, and close the poll, and then we will share the results. And you got a lot of folks. Yeah, here a lot of folks haven't done it yet. Yeah. Well, I kind of suspicion yep. that. So let's go ahead and. And again, get to, get to this issue of why are credentials, could they be important to you? Um, it depends, obviously, on your situation. But it, one of the technical professional schools, I think, would really benefit from credentials. One of the elements is if you're trying to help students track external courses they've taken. Uh, so if they're bringing in courses from other institutions and they'd like to have that in their record, you could use that to record that without having to create a fake course in your student manager. Uh, number two, things like employment history. Um, if you're doing a career tracking, a lot of vocational technical career schools need to track their employment status of their graduates. A uh, great place to do that. Certific whoa, certifications. Um, if you've got uh, you know, plumbing certification and apprenticeship a, a completion. Uh, you can use a credential code to store that. Licenses, if you're tracking real estate license, an optometry license, 
any kind of licensing that you need to track. Um, again, you, you know that there are user-defined data fields you can use, but the credential element gives you a lot more detail that you can store about these uh, external licenses. So things as mundane as exam scores, whether it's a TOEFL exam for an English as a second language program, or whether it's entrance exams for a college, or uh, exams uh, beginning work key scores for, again, career and technical. And then general skills. If you, uh, for some reason, wanted to track skills of students have, if that's something you can kind of help them build out in a resume, uh, it gives you a spot to do that. Uh, there were a couple of people who were starting to use, and I would invite folks, I should have asked earlier, but put a little note in and for Lori, and, and this can continue while I move ahead, and, and we'll get it into discussion. But if you are using any, uh, using credentials to store something else, uh, send a note to Lori, and we'll, we'll cover that when we get into Q&A. All right, Lori, can you think of any others as you've thought about this? Uh, we got most of the suspects there? I do have somebody that's using it to keep track of all the different pieces uh, for a law enforcement program. There's a lot that people have to provide before. Oh, like oh kind of a center. credential kind of a credential check. Have they passed their firearm safety license? Have they uh, done their a background, background check? check their oh, physical, their driver's okay. license, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so we can talk about different. that as far as different ways to check that off, so because of the, the supplemental data fields. All right, let's get into what is the credential screen. First of all, again, for those of you who have not yet moved to 8.0, you'll note this is different. Uh, in 8.0, all that you saw was just a grid like this. And again, you could type anything you want in the grid. You could identify a type. But basically, the labels were all the same. What you saw on the label was what you had for data entry. Uh, the new thing in 8.0 is that you now can create, well, first of all, you have a prettier data entry element at the top and you can define the labels on those. So here you see employment. Um, and again, I, this one is, I don't know that we've uh, connected with that. I'll show you a live one in a second here. And credential screen, you enter information, and it appears. Come on, mouse. I get my mouse. There we go. Um, so again, and but as you move from uh, field to field, you can actually have, now you'll note this particular screen looks differently. It has a different set of data elements uh, displayed. I'm going to go into live to show you how this really works. So uh, this is now 8.0. Tina, you may not have seen this, but the new lookup is our Google-ish lookup. You just start typing in a few letters and it'll navigate to the person you want. Or if you were searching by firm, you just start typing into the box, Aceware Systems. And we have all of the people who are connected to Aceware Systems. So we want Havlicek. And um, again, I don't think this is new, but the option of being able to let you um, show credentials. If credentials exist, the asterisk appears to the right of credentials, just like Comments History does. So. Here we are with a credential. I've got several listed. You'll note type is employment. Well, when we define employment, we say we only want to show these five items. The title, date hired, date left. We can put in salary and the employer. All right, that's fine. Now, what if we were to go to courses? OK, now we have a course, a title, what the course code would be. The date could be, we could have defined that as enrolled in or date completed, what the grade is, and what institution it's from. All right, what about skills? So when we talk about skills, we could indicate what the skill is, do you have a category defined for it, the date it was acquired, and any kind of notes. So again, I think I moved this around in terms of my examples. But you get the gist, license. So when we click on license, we've defined it as the description, the number of the license, the date awarded, and if it was a license that had an expiration date, 
you could put in an expiration date. Now I'm going to show you the generic mode, which is basically all of the data elements that are available in the credential area. And you'll see there is a type category, which being the plus means you can make as many categories as you want. There's a title field, a code field, two date fields, a, um, a score field, which can be used for character or n number data, a credits, which actually is a number field. So I can't type alphabetical stuff. It'll only handle numbers. Uh, an institution reference or a source, and then a general notes area. So again, uh, really gives you the ability to use any or all of those. So we, we talked about the idea of a, I had an example in, the, uh, oh, um, turning in for the police officers. So if you wanted to declare this um, uh, background check, you could indicate uh, the title is background check. You could put in as far as the institution giving the credential, whether, I don't know how that works, Lori, anybody from law enforcement, that whether it was the local police uh, department, whether it was a county sheriff's office, whether they went to the FBI local state office and had the FBI do the background check, and then putting in, of course, the date that that background check was returned. Um, so again, it gives you more data elements in order to store this kind of supplemental data. So, um, all right, I'm going to pause here, see if there's any questions or thoughts or, I, I, again, if, if you can think of any ways that you might be able to use this in your, um, in your reporting or in your record keeping. Laura, you have any other? Didn't, well, one thing that we did not talk about is that you can use that plus sign to add a new type. So if you want to modify it Right. Yourself, if we wanted yeah. to add in here, and this has to do with police, I don't know, um, LE Academy. And we have a limited amount of space. This is, so this was... Law Enforcement Academy, <clears throat> that we'd be able to create a new code, and then there would be a new, law, a, a new element in that. Uh, now, while we're on the form here, and this was um, uh, a generic, so I'm going to move this back to generic. Okay, while we're on this form, one of the things, if you've got a student with lots of elements, and you'll see I have three employment records here, and I said, I just want to see their employment data. What you can do is go to filter, click on employ, and it will display only the employment fields, or the employment elements that relate to what you're, what you're searching for. So well, now I want to look for just courses. So now we just have, uh, now when we do courses, what happens is it goes to the bottom of the list. You should click the up arrow key. Well, I guess there is only one in this particular case. And then, of course, you can go back <clears throat> and you've got the option to do all where you show all of the, uh, all of the elements that are in the particular uh, uh, piece there. Um, any questions, any buzz going on that we can kind of take for discussion now? I want to get into reporting. Uh, we forgot to talk about the web, Lori, in the slides, and I'll, I'll reference that uh, in a minute here. Um, okay. We've got people asking how to, use, how to use it for specific cases. And I'm going to tell you to talk with your tech, because those are very, very specific and detailed. And the tech and you can work it out best rather than doing it here. Right, yeah, we're not going to get into troubleshooting each individual case. But um, all right, so we've got the information here, and you're saying, well, how do I get these notes to be private to, or to be unique for my particular, uh, my particular examples here? So we have a skill which only has three or four items on it. All right, let's, let's go about how we do that, and I think we'll lead with that to a slide. Um, what you do is go to Module Codes. We'll look up Names, Testing, and Certification Types. So let's go ahead and go there. We're going to go Edit Codes, go to Names, 
and you're going to see at the very last one of names, testing and certification types. So now you see the code. We have our description. And in the detail line, we use a, um, a it looks kind of funky, but it actually makes perfect sense. What you do is list the field name of the actual field in the testing table that has the code you want to put data in. You put a semicolon, and then you put in, if I get my pointer working, here it is. You put in the uh, name you want on it, the word code. Here is TE title, semicolon, the word title. Uh, down here, TE score, and we're going to use the label score, TE institute, semicolon institution. All right, so you kind of get the gist of that. So if we go next now to employment, now we see what is unique about this. For the title, we're going to give the label position. For the position title, for the date, we're going to call it hired. For the second date, we're going to label it left. TE institution is employer and TE score is salary. So again, you see we've basically created a on-the-fly, if you would, custom labeling like our user-defined fields uh, that you can make the data entry element make perfect sense for a staff member who you're saying, okay, enter in an employment record for Joe Schmo. He's got a new job. Um, all right, the, and again, this is something uh, in the help guide, uh, there is a section uh, that talks about the, <clears throat> the uh, credentials. And um, I would go into, go into the search mode, search for credential. I haven't tried this recently, but we're looking around name credentials test. It shows you the functions. It gives you ways how you can do that on the web. Uh, so again, you've got support uh, and help in order to be able to do that. Um, adding credentials, <clears throat> again, add new entry, fill out the information, and basically once you click in the type of the credential, um, to edit an existing credential, you go to the rows of credentials or the, the different rows, click on the one, and it will pop up into the list on the top. And again, that's probably best illustrated by going to a name again. So if I wanted to look at a skill, I click on skill, and now it pops up into my, uh, into my list up here. Uh, license, again, this, one of the things you can also do with this is that you can actually allow your students to enter in licenses or particular credential records on ACEWEB. How does that work? We're going to go ahead and open up a new link here for the AceWeb demo. This is the demo that's on the website. And if we go to our, um, I got to get credentials, credentials. Cheryl, do we have credentials examples? And I don't see it in my examples. I thought Cheryl had. Online, am I missing something here with credentials? I was unaware that that was up there, so I'm looking for it the same time. Yeah, I am saying, let me go look at courses, um, all courses. Sometimes we show, yeah, credentials are on the end of prerequisites. I thought we had a credential option on the website, and I apologize, folks. Yeah, we don't have. We don't have that online. Um, basically, what that allows you to do, if we, once a student would log on, that they can go to their profile. And on their profile, there would be a option to uh, edit the credentials that they're connected to, like the same way they would select interest code areas so again, if that is something that you've got or want to in, let your students, uh, in, you know, 
I guess, um, independently, or you want to invite students to go in and update their credential profile, uh, you are able to do that. And I will talk to, we'll get with Cheryl. Um, Cheryl's been redoing our website and about getting an example of the credential uh, logging <clears throat> on our website. So I apologize for not having that ready for you. Um, all right, uh, filtering credentials. And we talked, to, we already gave you an example of this. Uh, the one thing to note, as we said earlier, if you are using credentials and you're doing filtering, uh, when you land on the name record, uh, you say, wait a minute, there were more than one. You've got to remember to move the up arrow key so that it displays all of the ones on there. And I will have to check to see if Matthew can point us to the top on that. Um, all right, I think we're just about ready. Reporting, uh, little things like reporting. All right, where are some different ways you can generate reports? We do have in the base reports now, and in, in your system, if you're just starting to use credentials, you probably don't have this report because it would be in uh, the new demo release. Um, and the easiest way to do that would be download the demo, go to Tools, Reports, export it out of uh, the demo and import it into your live system. And again, your technician can help you with that. So here's an example of a credential report. <clears throat> Under the name Quick Reports, there is a report of transcript with credentials. And what this allows you to do is to display all of the credentials or selected credentials. Now, in this example, um, we're showing basically all the credentials that is assigned that are assigned to Havlicek so that those can be added onto the individual's transcript. <clears throat> the other way of running it, and again, I don't have have an, a, a demo in, I don't have the example in the demo, but under the transcript routine through the regular quote, quote routine, you can add, uh, you can add tr credentials to the transcript. The other way to generate them is to use the, um, the special credential reporting functions. These are some functions, now again, this is for regular reports now. And again, uh, if you're not that familiar with credentials, this is something your technician can help you use to apply to reports uh, within your system as you start to use them. The other place you can do credential reports is directly with the F5 name finder tool. <clears throat> and again, if you haven't used F5, uh, it's a great tool. Again, allows you to search by first name, parts of an address, city, an email domain. Uh, but it also has something called select names based on credential. So when you do that, it actually brings up a credential search element where you can indicate uh, by code, by title, by type, by the notes or the institution. And the way that works is, no, we're not done yet, not done yet, almost done. Okay, well, this is going to be a, a quick one here. Well, we don't need to pull up a name record. We're on a name. The F5 key is that if I wanted to find everybody where I was looking for, they had skills entered, and I'm just doing by the type of credential. I don't have a lot of sample data. Any student that has a skill, I want to include. So we're going to hit the OK button. We do nothing here. And it looks like poor Havlicek is the only person with skills. So it shows their name. It shows the code, the title, and then the detail about the particular skill. We go back to that, and let's say we're going to search for the word, a title contains build. All right, we're going to come out of that, tab out. And there was the only one. And again, just like the other name searches with F5, if you point to the name record, you can double click, bring it up, and be able to see all the information. Uh, there's the build class, how to build software. That was uh, what uh, popped this up. He said, well, that's not much of a report. Well, if you remember, one of the things you can do with the F5 is export it to Excel. 
So if you wanted a list of names of people who had particular skills or particular credential elements, you can do the export to Excel, pull them out, and that's, again, a very quick uh, and simple way of <clears throat> being to pull up people uh, based on their credential. So, um, Lori, I said we were going to try to keep this brief for people so they could get back to summertime activity. Um, what kind of questions we got? What kind of things we need to go over? Actually, we don't have any questions. <laughs> We've, people are in awe. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, a show of hands here. So if you would, uh, Lori, um, I'm going to make everybody's hands go down. Raise your hand if, you, if you've not used credentials before and you're now thinking, you know, there's a couple places we could use that. So again, make me feel good. You don't, don't lie to me. But raise your hand if you say, you know, yeah, I think there would be some things we might be able to use this for. I just want to kind of know if we've, oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love to see hands. You guys are just making Lori and I feel good. But bless you anyway. All right. Well, that's great. Well, uh, again, um, uh, professional programs, technical programs, academically related programs are definitely ones where we would, I could see you using this um, community ed programs. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you another twist. You said, well, I'm just a, communi just a community ed program, and I, don't, and I don't know what we'd use it for. Well, Lori, how about volunteer tracking? If you were to put in here, add a new entry, and we're going to call this volunteer, volunteer, and then what we're going to do, if we add volunteer in here, then we'd say what it is they're volunteering for. They could say when they're available. You'd put over here available, you know, 8 a.m. to noon, Monday, through, Monday Tuesday, Wednesday. Again, see, this is where a lot of the code fields on manager with interest codes or some of the one field character codes that you've got in additional info. Uh, with the notes field, you've got a lot more space available to use for that. So again, even a community ed program, oh, we don't deal with credentials, we don't deal, but it would be a way for you to track. And again, in terms of the code, it might be docent. You might have a code for child care. You might have a code for helping prepare meals. Uh, once you add that, once you add that to the record, you can use your F5 key. And I want to search for the code docent. Hit the OK button if I could type. And did I get any? But there's our Kevin Costner who we've said, well, that guy could volunteer to help us out. So again, uh, multiple ways to use that. All right, Lori, have I re on enough to have any questions popping up that people want answered, or they just want to go back and start experimenting with the, um, with the credential element? Well, I think they're going to hit the pool, and then tomorrow... I think we're going to hit the, the pool. Element. Sounds like <laughs> Lori's about ready to see her grandson in an hour here. So I, I give your swimsuit on already to head to the pool, so... No, 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 no. I no, can't no, work no. that way. Can't work that way. Okay, okay. So, very good. Well, Lori, listen, thank you so much. Uh, you might want to, we didn't get in our, our slideshow, Lori, but our next webinar, let's go ahead and tell people where we are. We do have it. There it is. Yeah, uh, workshops. I'm sorry, Lori, I didn't get far enough along here. Uh, two weeks from today uh, on workshops. And again, the workshop module has been in Manager for years, uh, and they're just, Again, it's it's almost it's it's actually similar to the credentials element, only it's more oriented, of course, for registration level details related to the course or a class or a workshop uh, that you're doing or a or a, um, a learning event where you're registering people for and signing people in on uh, that's tied to courses. So. Um, very good. Well, Lori, thank you much for uh, again doing this from a, a long distance. Uh, hope your trip uh, goes well the rest of the time. And uh, everybody else, again, enjoy that summer weather. Hope you've had a chance to get a break and uh, school starting shutter very soon. So have a good week, everybody. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.